morning everybody or afternoon actually it's 12 o'clock new year's eve my last interview of 2020 i want to thank lindsay mcneil from colts neck high school for joining me lindsay thank you for joining me thank you for having me do you have any special plans for tonight I think i'm just gonna lay low with my family tonight the last two years i've worked new year's eve and i work overnight so i was there but i don't remember the last time i was actually awake for New Year's Eve, you know, me and my friends, we usually always went out on New Year's Day to watch football and we just stayed home on New Year's Eve. But so um, I like to ask all, all the players I talk to this um, at the end of last year when uh, COVID hit and, you know, schools went virtual. How did you find that adjustment? Yeah, so it was definitely difficult to adjust to that at first, but I did enjoy how my teachers they let us finish our work at whatever pace we wanted to during the day. We had no Zoom, call, Zoom calls, unfortunately, but we were able to manage our time by ourselves, which was nice. Yeah, I think I remember the first person I interviewed from Marlboro, which is, you know, same school, school district. I think she, she basically said you managed your own time, um, you know, where, you know, I know some of the schools – you know, a little further south, uh, they pretty much dictated when uh, everything had to be in, when you had to be on a Zoom call or Google Meet, whatever it is. Um, so th I think that's, I think the way free old school district handle is beneficial, especially when, you know, you're going to college next year, you, you're going to need to learn time management. Yeah, you know, yeah. they, just, they just give you a syllabus and that's it. <laughs> you got to figure it out your own. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you, you play soccer, you're a senior. Um, when did you start playing um, soccer? So I started playing rec soccer around five years old, but I didn't try, I didn't join a travel team until I was in seventh grade. Oh, wow. That's actually a late start for yeah, travel. Yeah, really late start. Um, what league did you start in? I started just on my um, town team, Colts Neck Travel. Colts Neck? Team. Yep. Um, what travel team did it was a Colts Neck travel to? Yep, the Thunder. Okay. Were called. Uh, did you play any other sports? I was big into gymnastics when I was little. You did not want to do gymnastics in high school? Nope. <laughs> when did you give that up? Uh, I would say the summer going into seventh grade. I think okay. I just so when you started, okay. Yeah. yeah um, travel and you know academy soccer it's a lot more uh, time co uh, consuming than it was when I used to coach travel so um do you have any siblings I do I have an older sister she's a sophomore at Syracuse University oh wow she play any sports no she no. well she actually horseback rides okay that's cool yeah no that is because uh, I interviewed a uh Sophia from Holmdale and uh, she, uh, she hoards, you know, competitions and everything. That was pretty, I actually saw one of her videos and I was like, oh, I don't think I could be on a horse jumping over, <laughs> yeah. over things. Uh, that's fun though. Um, I like to ask players is what, what have your parents meant to you, you know, with sports and, uh, you know, your development? Yeah. So my dad, actually, he was a huge athlete when he was in high school and, my mom she didn't play sports when she was in high school either, but my dad's always outside with me kicking around the soccer ball. Both of my parents are always on top of me of working out, staying in shape. I'm lucky because I, I got my license, obviously, but I had my mom around to drive me to places to work out, to recover, to go to games, practices. So I'm really lucky in that aspect. Uh, what sports did your father play? Um, he was a track star, football. I think he played baseball too. No. Is he a local? Is he what? Is he local? Like, did he grow up around here? Uh, he grew up in New Jersey, in Cedar Grove. Okay. Um, so that, that has to be help, you know, him, you know, he went through the high school, you know, playing sports, help you, you know, if you had any issues and stuff. Yeah. Um, so who, who was, what was the travel team that you played for? Cold Sec Thunder. Who, who was your coach? Alberto Morello. He was awesome. That, that sounds like a soccer coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, how, how did he help you, you know, in your development? Well, he was my, um, my first start of really playing travel soccer, per se, mm -hmm. until I joined my club team. So he really mm -hmm. taught me the basics of soccer. 
who who was your club team after travel? Afterwards, I joined NJX Homedale, which I was on that team for about two years. Mm-hmm. And, and then, any... yeah, go and ahead. Then Cedar Stars Academy. Okay. With Miguel Nieto, and he was a huge part of my soccer career. He was amazing. And then now I'm on PSA Wildcats. Who were some of your teammates on Cedar Stars? I seem to interview a lot of players from Cedar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, trying to think who, who you would know. Because a lot of the girls don't really play soccer anymore. Oh, okay. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so that's, that's why I joined the PSA team. That's, uh, that's something because, you know, I know Academy is not cheap and, and you know, yeah. not, not, not playing. Um, what position uh, did you mainly play growing up? Defense. Defense. And that's yeah. what you play at Colts Neck too, right? Yep. Um, you know, speaking of Colts Neck, you, freshman year, you're going into high school. What were some goals you set for yourself? Yeah. So I think social goals on that aspect, I just wanted to make friends because I was a freshman <laughs> Because going into the Colts Neck program, I knew how amazing the varsity team was under Coach Phillips. Mm-hmm. So I thought to myself, oh, I'm not going to make varsity as a freshman. Like, those girls are insanely good. I just want to make friends and have fun my freshman year. Was that uh, – was Frankie on that team? No, she graduated. Okay, okay. So you, you just missed her by one, one year? Yep. <laughs> I know, because I – you know, I don't, I don't know her obviously, but I followed all the Penn State stuff, and uh, she, yeah, she seems. And talking to some of the reporters that have been covering the area, they said, she, you know, she was a special talent. Um, who were some seniors? So, so, did you play freshman or JV? I played freshman. Well, we didn't really have a freshman team, so we were kind of combined with the JV girls. Okay. But then, when the varsity girls got to states, I was able to be pulled up and sit the bench again some games it was it's always a big thing when a freshman gets pulled up yeah I, I remember I remember when my sister she got pulled up I mean she got pulled up early in early in the season but it's it's just a big deal even you know you know and it's mostly around right before states is when they start pulling up you know freshmen you know or sophomores yep. um who are some upperclassmen that you were able to lean on or you know go to if you needed uh, help or advice with anything your freshman year um, definitely Kayla Lee. She plays, I think she plays at Columbia right now. Oh, wow. She was super, super nice. And Christina Gamby, her name was. I was able to run track with her after the season, and she was so nice. So you, you did track your freshman year? Yep. Uh, how many years did you do track? Just one year. <laughs> Just one year. What did you, you ran, I guess? I'm guessing you yeah. ran. What what event? I did the 400 and the 200. Oh, very good. Yeah, I can't. I'm not. I'm not a runner anymore. So. <laughs> um, so, going into sophomore year, what was something you were looking to improve on? Yeah, so sophomore year, actually, Coach Hine came into the program. Okay, I was going to ask that next. Actually, yeah. to <laughs> so obviously, I wanted to impress him and I wanted to make a good um, impression on him. But he was actually my track coach freshman okay. year. He did know me. Um, but I wanted to make varsity again, obviously. I just wanted to improve as a player and find my spot on the team, like on the fields. How do you uh, like playing for Coach Hunt? I, I met him um, Red Bank Regional versus Central. He was there scouting this year for, for states and a uh, great guy I talked to. You know, he came up, he, you know, he's like, are you Nick? I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, which is how most people, <laughs> I meet most people. Um but uh, uh, I enjoyed, you know, just listening, you know, uh, he was watching and, you know, giving some, you know, thoughts of the game and it, it, it was fun, you know, saying, and then we were joking about the Manasquan game in at the, at the army base. Oh my and God, I'm freezing that I, could, I, I left, I left, it was three to one. And I think there was only 10 minutes left. And it, I see he posts the final score five to three. I was like, what happened in the last 10 minutes? Because I couldn't stand out there anymore. I was, I was miserable. I know. And, and uh, I, don't, I don't know how you players, like the one you girls had a corner kick and the wind literally blew the ball into the net. Yep, Ashley, my other, <laughs> other senior on the team. <laughs> like every, and every, your team's reaction to Masquan's team was like, what, like all your face was like, what just happened? Like the it ball literally off. just blew into the net. That's, that's how windy. <laughs> And I remember 
you know, when I was in high school, St. Rose, that was, you know, that was their home home complex. It was the Seagull because they didn't have their fields yet. And it, it was always cold and always a miserable time mm-hmm. <laughs> at that field. How was it? I, I mean, I'm jumping to your, your, this past season, but how was it playing in that game? Well, we knew Manscom was going to be a tough competition going into that. Um, and when we first got our two goals, we were like, oh, this is kind of crazy with the wind right now. Yep. It's freezing. We're like, we're up 2-0 right now. We're like, let's just hold it. And then Ashley scored that corner. I'm pretty sure that was a third goal. Yeah. And then Manscon came back and scored against us. And we were like, oh my gosh, like we need to really pick it up. Yeah, that was uh that was an interesting game. It couldn't be pleasant playing in those those conditions. Mm-hmm. Um and going back to your sophomore year, you played the team played brick in the short conference tournament and the states. Yep. Both not the results you wanted. Talk uh you know, how, how is it, you know, losing to the same team in, in, in two postseason tournaments? Yeah. And it's, the state game was well, one nothing. It was it was a tough game. Yeah. So just, just talk those two games. Well, we always knew Brick was such a hard competition against Colts now because we we've always been rivals, which unfortunately we weren't able to play against them this year, which would have been awesome. But, yeah, I just remember – how intense that game was and how crazy it was to just be watching. And I think I was able to get into it um, in the short conference game and the competition. Those girls were so good. And it was just a fight the whole time. Yeah. Brickhead, they had a very good team. Yep. That that's that season. Um, and, you know, last year they had, they had a pretty good team too. Um, I saw, is it, did you swim your sophomore year? <laughs> yeah, so funny story. So I wanted to join swimming because uh-huh. I knew it was a good workout for me. And I yeah. used to do swimming over the summer at Sultan Swim School. Okay. Um, so I was on the team for about two weeks and I went to a soccer tournament and I knew that soccer was going to be too much of a commitment. So I had to leave swim. Oh, oh that stinks. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I enjoy, I enjoy sw- swimming. So um, it's over in Wall, right? Yeah, I work yeah. there now. <laughs> oh, really? My, um, my my nieces did the the camp one of the, the week camp <laughs> yeah during the during the the one week the one the older one had no problem the younger one <laughs> yeah <laughs> they told my sister I guess because they do a show like the yeah. towards the end and they told my I I think they did it for two weeks actually. And uh, they told my sister with the younger one, there's nothing to watch yet <laughs> because she still like was afraid to get jumped in the water. But now she. I mean, the school did was, you know, it's supposed to make you more comfortable, you know, kids more comfortable. And, you know, she finally got, got the hang of it. And, and uh, she, to me, she has that swimmer's body. She's tall, skinny, and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, long arms and long legs. Um, so going to, to the junior year, um, what were goals you had, you know, you know last season? Mm-hmm. So going into junior year, I was excited to – so going back into my freshman and sophomore year and kind of junior year, the team wasn't really connected chemistry wise. Um, And I think that's really a big component of a team. So I kind of wanted to, as an upperclassman, I kind of wanted to have better chemistry with the underclassmen and also the seniors too. I think that was one of the main goals into my junior year, but unfortunately in May of 2019, I tore my ACL. Oh yeah. So June I had surgery. So I was going to be out my whole junior year. Oh, so you didn't pl- you didn't play your junior year? No, nope. um, I, I didn't know that. It's weird because I I asked, <laughs> I asked coach anything anything interesting I should know, and uh, <laughs> he, he didn't bring he didn't, he 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 gave me a couple things. He didn't give me an injury. Usually, <laughs> the first thing somebody says if that a player got hurt, they didn't, you know they, um, their player was hurt. Yep. Uh, what was that? Uh, what was the treatment like to get you know to get yourself better? Yeah, it was it was such a hard recovery. Yeah. Like it, it, it was about 10 months for me. Uh-huh. Which is about at, about the right yeah. time for... It was really sad knowing that I couldn't play my junior year because I feel like junior year for soccer, that's such a huge year Yeah, yeah. for you in high school. So it was really upsetting to just sit on the bench. And like yeah. during the games, I'd be like, oh, I wish I was in there and I could help them. But yeah, I was able to rehab at Elite Sports Physical Therapy in Tin Falls, which is an amazing place to rehab. Yeah. And that's where I usually do all my sports my agility, strength, and training at Reach Your Potential Training. 
which they're both combined together in the same building. So it's an amazing facility. I think you, you I don't think you're the first person that told me about that place. Mm -hmm. Somebody else, I think, brought up Elite. So they're awesome. Uh, that's that's good. Um, so since you didn't play, I mean, you were you were there, obviously. Talk what was like the team's attitude when they when they got that uh, that victory back over Brick in the states and in a shootout. That game was crazy. I just remember hugging all my girls. We're all watching the last person to hit it, and we knew if she made it in, we were gonna win. And she made it, and we all just ran out to her, and we just dogpiled on top of her. That that feeling was amazing. Who was the last player that scored? I think it was Eva Roros, or maybe even Jenna Kushner, but it was crazy that game. Um, end up you got you lost to Allentown the next and round. Yeah. Now Allentown's, a, I mean, they're not a short team, but they're I, I know they're they're always very good. Um, yep. just talk that game because that game went to a shootout as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Just talk that game. I mean, that's tough. I first in playoffs, I hate soccer games ending in shootouts. It just it doesn't really give you. It just tells you know who had the better shooters that day. <laughs> it, it, uh, it really was unfortunate because the senior girls, um, my junior year, I was pretty close with them. Uh -huh. It was just so devastating to see them crying, obviously, and it's just losing. But that whole game, like, same with Brick, it was just so competitive. Like, everyone yelling, everyone just running their butts off the whole time. Like, we wanted it so badly. It was just – it was unfortunate that it was the shootout that ended us. Yeah, and, you know, you brought up seniors crying. That's one reason I love high school, you know, sports, because I, I was at a game it, – it, your junior year, I was at a state game, a uh, local team lost, and uh, – one of the seniors was very upset and, you know, just she was one of the best players in the country. She made the all American team and, uh, mm -hmm. but seeing like, you know, com committed to a big school freshman year and uh, just seeing that emotion coming out of a player like that, it just shows how much it means to, you know, the kids in high school and it, it makes it, that's what makes it fun for the fans and, you know, the kids. Yep. Um, going into your senior year, did you think the season was going to happen? I did not think it was going to happen. It's funny, Pete, uh, the players are, you know, I always ask that question, and it's about 50-50. <laughs> <You know? laughs> half, half the players thought. Um, when did you start feeling, did you, like, even up until um, that two week? you know, you had those two weeks, you know, after school started, they didn't want anybody. Did you feel then it was going to start to happen, or did you, it was just, you know, first game, that was when you were you knew it was going to happen? Um, I'd say – our first preseason day, I knew that it was going to happen because okay. high school, they really took it that everyone wear masks, everyone social distance, everyone be safe. Um, and I think that really played a big component into us being able to have the season. Yeah. And the, the Freehold School District, Regional School District, they were very tough. And, uh, you know, they, you know, they stuck to their guns with the, the standards and, you know, the rules that they, you know, they laid out. Mm -hmm. um, which I think is good because I don't think any schools had to uh, sit out for two weeks in uh, the free in the Freehold School District. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Free, Freehold did Freehold Township did actually. Yeah. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I think they, they had to sit out a couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, so um, yeah, it's good, and you know, you know, like your team got the any of your games get postponed. Um, I don't think so. That's good. Yeah, I know. Like, I think basketball is going to be a mess. You I know. know. I feel terrible. I, yeah, athlete. first of all, it's only five weeks. So if, it, if there's a case on the team, you're missing 40% of your season. Like, what's what's the point? Then um, it's tough. And then, you know, I know soccer, there was rules that you could only – I think there was only two weeks you were allowed to have three games in a week. So if basketball, you know, it's going to be – going to be tough um and and some of the schools in soccer got you know screwed over a little bit you know at the end of the season you know Holmdale girls team the, the Middletown oh, yeah. all the, the all the Middletown teams um just it stinks I just don't think it's gonna you know basketball being inside so mm -hmm. a lot of coaches want them to postpone it until March so I don't know. Mm -hmm. um all right enough of that um 
so you being a senior leader, what is something you tried to teach or um, instill in the, in the underclassmen? Mm -hmm. So me and, so we had five seniors on our team, right? Uh, three of us were captains, the two other girls. We're lucky that we all stayed together since freshman year. We all went through all the four years together. So we wanted to show the underclassmen that no matter if we were captains or not, all five of us are leaders on the team. Mm -hmm. And also Coach Hine made that apparent to the underclassmen that they can come up to us, any of us, ask us questions or anything. And another big component of this year is our team chemistry. It was just so difficult in the past uh, regarding team chemistry. And we wanted the underclassmen to feel so comfortable with us. And we want us to feel comfortable with them too. So it was a really big deal for all of us to gel together, which ultimately I think led us to having such a successful season. Yeah, and that's good. What, this is probably a tough question. What is something that you and the other seniors try changing to help improve the team chemistry? Yeah, um, I think our leadership qualities, I think we're a little bit, not really sure how to word it. We weren't as, we're a little bit nicer. <laughs> okay. Not oh, I, yeah. I say, you know, each player needs to be, ha it's handled differently. You know, some player yeah. could take the screaming and yelling and other players, you, you know, you need to be coddled a little bit better. And that, you know, I'm not even saying that bad way. It's just, you know, my niece's team, there's, just, you know, she can get yelled at and won't bother her, but there's another player that she gets yelled at once she just turns it off. Like she's, yeah. she's done, she's done for the game. Um, now uh, I want to just, before we, we talk, you know, some of the, your games this past season, um, how is it, you know, knowing, you know, you're a defender, knowing you got such a good goalie behind you in uh, oh, Caitlin Torres because she is definitely one of the best goalies in the state. I love Caitlin Torres. She is, oh, she's awesome. She has such a big heart and she is insanely good. Yeah. Goalie. She is she playing at the next? She's playing at the next level, right? College. Yeah, she's going to Scranton University. Scranton, yeah. Somebody, somebody told me that. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That that was one reason I wanted to. I ventured out in that horrible weather because I wanted to see Caitlin play. Yeah, because, okay. you know, I see all the write-ups and stuff, and uh, it just uh, – it would have been a shame if I didn't get, get to see her play. Mm -hmm. um, talk, probably your two toughest games were wall, I'm going to say. They were probably – well, you played Cranford too. Cranford, Cranford oh, was Cranford very, and Wall. Yep. Yeah, Cranford was very impressive when I saw him against Brick. But just talk those two Wall games. You know, it had like the perfect setting. End of the year. You know, both both teams going for the division yeah. title. Um, you know, unfortunately, Wall came out on top. But just talk those two games. Yeah. So going into that game, we knew like, oh, we're undefeated. They're undefeated. Like, it's going to be a crazy game. And we knew that the girl, Olivia Remy's, she was insane. And a couple other girls on that team, they were also extremely good. So Coach Hine, we had a whole discussion, probably one practice about what we're going to do. Are we going to man mark them? How are we going to play? Um, so our first game, we were home. That's when we lost to them. So after that game, we had a whole sit down and talked, what are we going to do to be better and to win? Because we thought that we had a chance that we could win against them. I think it was just unfortunate, both of the games, how the goals were scored. Um, but I wish that we could just redo it and play them again, because I think we could have won against them. They have uh, – <clears throat> I only saw them once, and they beat Red Bank Regional 7-3. to three. The first it was the first, it was opening day and I thought it was going to be a good game and I was miserable I picked that game because it was just a lopsided game, yeah. but um yeah Olivia is a special talent and uh, Dollar Girl uh, Kirsten I think her name's Kirsten Brown her last her last name's Brown she's only a sophomore and uh, she was she was very very good um talk that that Cranford game you you beat Central Regional. You had to buy the first round, and then you beat Central, right? You had to buy the first round, yeah, right? and then you beat Central Regional, uh, which yeah. they have, you know, they're not a great team, but they have a very tough defense. When they I, when I, yeah, I saw them twice this year. They had a tough defense. Um, so just, and then you move on to Cranford, which is always a state powerhouse since I was in high school. They've, they've been up there. Um, so just talk uh, that Cranford game. Yeah, so we didn't know really what to expect with Cranford because I don't think Colts Knack High School has ever really played against them in soccer. So going into this game, we were kind of blindsided, not really knowing what to do, but we knew that we had to play with our hearts because obviously if they're far into this competition and we are, it's going to be a good game. 
Um, their defense was also very, very good. And they moved the ball extremely well uh, against them. It was definitely a tough game to finish, at least. The final third for us, it's always the most difficult to just get it into the goal and get it in. Mm -hmm. But our forwards are amazing, so. Yeah, that um, they had that one girl. I think she's a sophomore that, I mean, I started to play against Brick. She just put the ball wherever she wanted. It was pretty, pretty impressive to watch. Yeah. It just shows, you know, obviously I'm a sure guy and I'll always root for my short teams, but there's so much soccer talent in the state. It's just spread out all over. Yep. Um, something I wanted to bring up because I always see it on, you know, Coach Hine posted it. Um, the team does a lot of community service, it seems like. Yep. Just talk about a couple of the things that your the team has done and what got, um, who started it and, um, how, how has it rolled out? So I think ever since Coach Hine took over sophomore year, he's made it a big deal about raising money for the American Cancer Society, especially for breast cancer in the month of October. Unfortunately, we do have some girls on our team who have been affected by it with their families. So it definitely is a big deal in the month of October for us to raise money. So this year we had a father on our team who organized masks. They are pink masks and we were able to sell them. We would wear them every game. They were awesome. Um, and then our games, I think against SJV was the big one where we all spray painted our hair pink. Oh, cool. <laughs> that was really fun. <laughs> yeah, that seems good. And then I think uh, he also, I think he said, you guys do something for the homeless too? Yeah, so we actually, we raised a bunch of money um, for the kids in our school district and people around us just for the holidays. And then another thing that we did this year is the seniors and I, we organized an ocean cleanup for oh, cool. the varsity team to do. We thought that'd be a fun team bonding experience. So we went to Union Beach and we were able to pick up a bunch of the trash on the beach all together. So it was pretty fun. Now you being a senior, that's something that, you know, I would think you would hope, you know, passes down to the underclassmen that they, they keep up, you know, it's traditions like that, that make, you know, could be something small like that, that makes a program, you know, you yeah. know, come together and stuff like you said, you know, you were able, you know, chemistry, it would get the chemistry better. Yeah. The girls on the team this year were just awesome. Like I'm so lucky to have the five seniors. Like I call those girls my, my best friends because we've been together since freshman year and even the underclassmen they're awesome everyone has a good heart everyone's so talented in soccer like there's really not much you could wish for yeah that's what you know a lot of players were happy when the da disbanded that rule you know that yeah. you couldn't that you couldn't play because you like like i said before there's nothing better you know playing for your home your home uh, town team fans come especially if you, you know you got a good team you make the playoffs and uh I've been to many state games where, you know, the fans are there just so rowdy. It's just so, you know, the kids are so, it's so fun to listen to. Yeah. Um, real quick, we'll do some rapid fire questions. Okay. What's your favorite movie? Uh, um, I would say my favorite movie is, I like Disney movies. So probably like Winnie the Pooh. I feel like that's Winnie a classic. <laughs> that's an older one. Yeah. Um, how about TV show? Mm, I like Grey's Anatomy. That has been on. I can't believe how long that's been on. I thought it was off the air <laughs> and it's still going on. Crazy. Um, what's your favorite food? Um, I like fruit. Probably like pineapple. It's good, healthy. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your favorite school subject? Right now, actually, cold snack. Uh, this is the first year that they're having an anatomy and physiology class. Oh, wow. I really enjoy that class. That does not sound something up my alley. Sounds, <laughs> it sounds difficult. Um, I was somebody who wanted to take multiple gym classes his senior year. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite number? I would say 15. Is that your soccer number? Yep. Okay. Um, la last one of that. What is something you enjoy doing in your free time other than soccer? Yeah. Um, it's probably a generic answer, but I love hanging out with my friends or just to be in my room with my animals i have two dogs and a cat i just like to chill in my safe space with them <laughs> what uh what kind of dogs i have portuguese water dogs okay um uh before we wrap up just talk to future um you know going to college next year what are you you haven't decided on a school yet have you no i have not what are some things that you're looking at you know with, you know size location that kind of stuff 
So I definitely want to try to play soccer in college because okay. I really love it. Um, it's been super hard to get recruited though this year, everything with my injury, because I missed my junior season, which I yeah. think is a very big season for recruitment. Um, and also with COVID, it's been yeah. so challenging. So I do hope to play soccer in college. I'm looking to go not too far away because I'm a very home buddy. Okay. <laughs> Probably like five hours away. That's my math. Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's a good distance. That's pretty yeah. far. Um, do you know what you want to study? I want to be an occupational therapist. Okay. I love working with autistic kids mostly, and I like working in that aspect. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, last question. What advice would you give your younger self? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, if I could give my younger self any advice, I think it'd be more to be more confident with myself, like either it's soccer, even if it's school, to just commit to something and to just go with what my gut feeling is. Do you have good grades? Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. I, I, I say this probably every interview, but when I was in school, you either had grades or you played sports. You didn't have both. Now <laughs> it seems like, you know, even, even the boys, you know, they, you know, it seems like you have both. You have the grades and, you, you know, top athletes. It's pretty impressive that um, you, you girls find the time to balance schoolwork and, uh, you know, sports like you mm -hmm. do. Lindsay, thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you have a good New Year. You Stay too. safe. And I will probably be just staying in my room, too, <laughs> for <laughs> while the ball falls. I'll probably be sleeping. Yep. So, um, so, but thank you for joining me. Thank you for being my last interview of 2020. Sure. And, uh, you know, I wish you luck and, you know, hopefully um, uh, see playing, you know, college. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.